morning and welcome to our midweek service. Our service is being recorded this morning and I'm not with you live. Hopefully as you're listening to this I'll be away having my COVID-19 injection. Hopefully like many others praying that this vaccine along with the Lord's intervention would be a present help in our time of need. As I was preparing for this morning, I was led to the words of Psalm 27. And the psalmist says, One thing I have asked of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. And what a beautiful image this morning, to see the Lord high and seated, and his glory filling the temple. Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen, Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen, Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen, Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? Amen, Christ, have mercy. And we pray, God, we give you thanks that you're always attentive to our prayers and are not slow to answer us. You are sovereign over all history and yet you care for us individually and respond to our cries. We put our trust in you afresh this day, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Bible reading this morning is Daniel 6, and we continue as we sing that wonderful hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, only thou art holy, and God desires and deserves our worship.
and may our God be blessed throughout eternity. Our collect for today, Almighty God, Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new, transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives, make your heavenly glory known. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our reading for today is Daniel 6, and I'm using a recording of the reading, and we listen to God's word together. Chapter 6. It pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom, with three administrators over them, one of whom was Daniel. The satraps were made accountable to them, so that the king might not suffer loss. Now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. At this, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. Finally, these men said, We will never find any basis for charges against this man Daniel unless it has something to do with the law of his God. So the administrators and the satraps went as a group to the king and said, O King Darius, live forever. The royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisors, and governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or man during the next 30 days, except to you, O king, shall be thrown into the lion's den. Now, O king, issue the decree and put it in writing so that it cannot be altered in accordance with the laws of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. So King Darius put the decree in writing. Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. So they went to the king and spoke to him about his royal decree. Did you not publish a decree that during the next 30 days anyone who prays to any god or man except to you, O king, would be thrown into the lion's den? The king answered, The decree stands in accordance with the laws of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. Then they said to the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, O king, or to the decree you put in writing. He still prays three times a day. When the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. He was determined to rescue Daniel and made every effort until sundown to save him. Then the men went as a group to the king and said to him, Remember, O king, that according to the law of the Medes and Persians, no decree or edict that the king issues can be changed. So the king gave the order, and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles, so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating and without any entertainment being brought to him, and he could not sleep. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice. Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done any wrong before you, O king. The king was overjoyed, and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him, because he had trusted in his God. At the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den, along with their wives and children. And before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. Then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations, and men of every language throughout the land, May you prosper greatly. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. And it's always good to hear God's word proclaimed. Let's pray. 
God our Father, we come before you today and we thank you for the example of Daniel and pray that you would open our hearts to your word. And Lord, you would write that word in our hearts. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. When we were little, we used to play a game of dare where you'd gather with your friends and you would dare them to do silly things like go and knock the neighbour's door and run away and hide or to go into the house and bring out some biscuits. Well, I'm sure you've heard of, of the, the song Dare to be a Daniel, Dare to stand alone, Dare to have a purpose firm, Dare to make it known. And while it may be just a song, I want to challenge you today and ask, would you dare to be a Daniel? Would you take a chance to be more like Daniel as you live out your Christian life? But I wonder what made Daniel different from all his contemporaries? What set him apart? And, and why on earth would we want to be like this man who lived all those years ago? Is it worth taking a chance in today's world? Well, let's turn to God's word and see what God has to say for us this morning. Well, the first thing I want to say about Daniel is that it is without doubt, and there is no question, that Daniel was a man of integrity. There were no skeletons in his cupboard. When we look at chapter 6, we find out that Daniel was a man who had a great reputation. We read that in verses 3 and 4. Now Daniel so distinguished himself among the chief ministers and satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. At this the chief ministers and satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his government of government affairs but they were unable to do so. They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor diligent. Isn't that amazing that those people who were seeking to point the fingers at Daniel couldn't find any faults with him? But I wish that was true of today's world. When people point their fingers at us and question our faith and our commitment to God. It made me sad recently when I heard about a man who had gone on furlough. This man is a Christian and involved in, in his church. But while he's on furlough, he's still working for his employers and he's also getting paid for it. Even though the government are, are subsidising his, his salary. You know, it's like the man who, who fiddled his taxes. And he ended up paying a lot less than what he should have done. And, and a few months later, he, he's lying in bed and he's tossing and turning. And, and he's unable to sleep because of the guilt of not paying his taxes. And so in the end, he decides to write a letter to the Inland Revenue. And in that letter, he apologises that he underpaid his taxes. And also told them that he was enclosing a cheque for £500. And if he was unable to sleep for the rest of the week, then he would send the rest. You know, we may laugh at that, but it's a tragic reality. That it's almost acceptable in today's society to compromise your integrity and values, even if you're a Christian. You know, it may not cause many people loss of sleep, and people may batter their eyelids a little. But at the end of the day, when we compromise our, val our integrity, when we lower our values, it comes between us uh, and the Lord. Like Daniel, we are called to live a life of integrity and purity. Uh, and that's what Peter mentions when he writes to the church in a second letter uh, in chapter 1 and, and verse 5. Peter writes, for this very reason, make every effort to keep your faith, to add to your faith goodness and to your goodness knowledge, 
to your knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and to godliness mutual affection and to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from becoming ineffective and unproductive in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus. But whoever does not have them is short-sighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past. And so Peter calls us to live a life of goodness and knowledge and self-control and perseverance and godliness and mutual affection and love. Those are the qualities that Peter calls us to have. And Daniel was a man who lived a life of both purity and integrity. The church isn't called to rubber stamp the, the world's behaviour. And as Christians, we are called to look to God for our standards, not to the world. And, and that's what Paul wrote to the church in Rome. Transform your minds. Renew your minds. Not according to the world, but according to God. And, and so Daniel chose to live this life of integrity and to live a moral life. He chose to be different. What about you? Do you dare to be like Daniel? Do you dare to be different? Now, to be different requires more than just being a man or woman of integrity. It requires being close to God. And you know, there's no doubt when we turn to Scripture that Daniel's fellowship and prayer life were unquestionable. And that's what we read in, in Daniel 6 and, and verse 10. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to God just as he had done before. We all know the song, don't we? Daniel was a man of prayer. Daily he prayed three times. But did you notice how Daniel prayed? Daniel prayed on his knees. We're told three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed. Now I'm not suggesting that you kneel if you're unable to. But what I am suggesting is that we grow closer to God in our prayer life and in our journey of faith. Looking back through history, you will find the number of ministries that were successful, not as a result of ability, but as a result of prayer life. And I can bear testimony, and I'm sure many of you can too as well, some of our worst failures were a result of not praying enough. You know, I don't believe we can live this kind of life where we do what we want, say what we want, go where we want, and then ask God to bless us. We need to be men and women of integrity. We need to be men and women of prayer. Dare you? Dare you get on your knees? Dare you? pray and see God at work in your life. We need to be more disciplined, don't we? And that's certainly true of Daniel. He was a man of discipline. And so like him, we need to use our tongues less for gossip and more for prayer, less for running people down and more for blessing God and, and building people up. You know, Daniel dared to be different. You know, you hear people complain about how godless and how immoral is society is. But I wonder how many of those people actually pick up their Bible and read it. I wonder how many of those people actually get down on their knees and pour out their hearts to God about society. Daniel got on his knees three times a day to intercede, to pour out his heart to God, even in the midst of danger. What about you? Do you dare to be different? Do you dare to commit yourself to being regular in the place of prayer? To be regular opening your scriptures? To be regular in worship, whether here online or when church reopens and we're able to do that safely? Do you dare to, to building other people up and playing a positive role within the church? 
Now those things don't come easy, do they? We all have a choice. And that choice is simple, whether we're going to choose the ways of man or to choose the ways of God. And here Daniel is put in a very awkward situation. The royal ministers, prefects, satraps, advisors and governments all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce a decree that anyone who prays to God or any human being during the next 30 days, except to you, your majesty, shall be thrown to the lions. Daniel had a choice here, whether he was going to choose God or choose the ways of man. In choosing God, there was that real danger. It was going to have an impact on his life. Choosing the ways of man, then he would please man and save his life. But this law that his so-called friends invented was no more a tr than a trap. They knew how Daniel would react. They knew that Daniel would get into trouble. And so they plan and Daniel falls right into the heart of their plan. Daniel didn't conform, did he? Did he go along with prayer pressure? Did he try and please people? Think about it. Did Daniel really want to be the, li the lion's dinner? Did he want to be thrown in the pit? I'm sure he didn't. But his legions was to God. It is yours. Daniel's testimony, it's one of integrity. It's one of prayer. It's one of allegiance to God. And in the end, Daniel chooses to love God more than his own life. He was determined to, to serve God no matter what the cost. And he was prepared to face pain and isolation. And as a result, we, we read in verse 27 that the king was overjoyed and he gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And remarkably, when Daniel was lifted from the den, he had no wounds on him because he trusted the Lord. I doubt any of us is going to end up in the lion's den. But there are going to be days. They're going to be weeks or perhaps months and years when we find ourselves in situations that are overwhelming. And at those times I ask, do you dare to be a Daniel? Do you trust in the Lord that he will bring us through? You know, Psalm 27 says, the Lord is my strength and my salvation. What then shall I fear? Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And even though I walk through the valley of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they will comfort me. And then those beautiful words from Psalm 32 and verse 7. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with a song of deliverance. And that was Daniel's experience. Do we dare to be a Daniel? Do we dare live a life of integrity? Do we dare to be Bible-based, church-going and persistent in prayer? Do we dare to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind and with all our strength? Do we dare to be different in today's society? Do you? I pray that God pours out his Holy Spirit upon you and upon me, that we would open to God transforming and renewing our minds, that we become people of integrity, people of prayer, people who are close to God, people that choose God and are obedient to him. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. At the beginning of our service during the notices, you may have heard a song playing and it's a song written by Graham Kendrick who wrote songs like Shine Jesus Shine and the words of the song are wholly overshadowing. I want to play that song and encourage you to sing along and allow the words to minister to you as you go through different experiences that you would know God's presence with you wholly 
overshadowing. Oh, spread your wings of mercy over me And guard my heart with true humility No shadow of the darkness pressing in Only the holy overshadowing Underneath your wings overshadowing will I seek but God alone no hiding place save only at your throne only the cross the blood to wash my sin only the holy overshadowing underneath your wings overshadowing And let us pray. And as we pray, we, we think about those words we've just sung. Oh, spread your wings of mercy over us. And guard our hearts with true humility. No shadow of darkness pressing in. Only your holy overshadowing. No refuge will we seek but God alone. No hiding place safe only at your throne. Only the cross, the blood to wash away my sin. Only the holy overshadowing. You are our shield and our glory. You are the lifter of our head. And though the storms may rage around us, 
we'll be safe within, beneath your holy overshadowing. No burden on my back too hard to bear, only the easy load you bid me wear. Until the troubles pass, my heart will sing praise for your holy overshadowing. And Father, we thank you today for your great power. Lord, we praise you for your truth. We are grateful that you have set us free from the clutching grasp of sin and death. Lord, would you be with your people today, especially in this pandemic, extending your grace, granting your freedom, providing your protection and empowering us with your strength. Lord, we ask that you would bring about an awakening of your presence as never been seen before. Lord, we ask that your name be proclaimed, that all plans to silence the name of Jesus would be thwarted and crushed. We pray that many would come to know you as Lord and Saviour. We pray that many would see your light that you would open blind eyes and release those still imprisoned. Lord, we pray that you would unify your people, especially during this week of prayer for Christian unity. Lord, we pray that you would unify us to glorify your name, that all who call themselves Christians would rise up believing in your great truth. Lord, wake us up. Remind us to live always aware of your presence, to redeem time, to listen to your words, to be willing to make a difference in our generation. We pray for those in authority, especially those who would seek to guide and lead us through these uncertain days. Lord, that you would give them wisdom and discernment as they lead. We ask that you would appoint strong, faithful men and women of integrity to serve this nation and all people. And Lord, we pray for your great healing on our world. Lord, we bring before you those who have need today, those who suffer as a result of COVID, those who are going through uncertain times because of cancer and other diagnosis. We remember those who bear in their bodies physical, mental and psychological illness. We pray for J, Albert, Darren, Izzy, Ellen, Samuel, Trevor, Tommy, Jim, John, Margaret, Sam, Sadie and all those others we have named in silence. Lord, shine your face on all of us. Lord, we need you more than ever. Our times are in your hands. Thank you that you are the healer. Thank you that you are rich in mercy and full of grace. Thank you that you are forgiving and merciful. Thank you that you are strong and mighty. Thank you that you are for us and that you fight for us today. Lord, we bring honour to your name, for you alone are worthy, and it is in your powerful name we pray for your kingdom to be done, and your will be done in all of our lives, as we trust you as our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We're going to join together in those beautiful words, The Lord's my shepherd. And as we sing them, we're going to declare that we trust in God alone. Let's worship the Lord. The 
The Lord's my shepherd, I'm not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still water. His goodness restores my soul, and I will trust in you. I will trust in you alone, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will lead me home, he guides my ways in right. I just love those words because it reminds me, like Daniel, we will go through difficult days, dark days, challenging days. And that hymn says, and though I walk the darkest path, I will not fear the evil one. For you are with me and your rod and your staff are the comfort I need to know. I will trust in you alone. Endless mercy follows me, goodness will lead me home. So let's hold on fast to God as we make a difference in this world for his glory and his sake. Let's pray together the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless and have a good week. Spread your wings of mercy over me And guard my heart in true humility No 